So today I have a, I'm demonstrating a, a 10 foot bio garden that is um, sitting between two houses here. And uh, this is kind of getting a, in the summer, since we're in the south, we'll get a lot of sun. Uh, just now it's uh, first of March and you can see we get, we're getting sun here uh, up to, you know, from about 11 till two o'clock. Uh, it really get nice for microgreens and, and and seedlings uh, it's ideal for you know you, you could if with that much sun exposure you could do year-round lettuce uh, doesn't need too much sun but in the summer we'll get a lot of sun so we can grow just about anything in here actually it's kind of ideal because you don't get too much sun um, and uh, when you're when you've got some shading in the in the uh, in the afternoon but the, the features of this are that we're, we're growing in a deep water trough, which is nice for doing lettuces, uh, microgreens, when you're either growing on trays uh, set up for that, or in these cups uh, on this stationary raft. The neat thing about this setup is that we've got the water on a timer, and it's pumping from the tank below. At my vortex here, you can't really see it very easily, but yeah, there's water spinning. You've seen it in some of the other videos. Uh, and it's pulling water from one end of the tank to the other, so we get a good mixture. We get a current moving through. I've got a biofilter in there, and I've got some fish, mini, just small uh, goldfish. They just keep the mosquitoes out. Um, they eat the larvae, so there's never any mosquitoes uh, produced from this type of system. And other, other, uh, insect larva uh, so yeah but the the nutrients we're creating from this little setup this is my mini uh, extraction bucket with a filter inside and a, and a drain mechanism I'm just pouring off the liquid from that draining it off you can see it here this has got a lot of uh, kitchen discards in it it has we use we drink a lot of mate tea and so the tea is then uh, leaching uh, with a, in an anaerobic setup on a regular basis. Just fill it, add water, let it ferment, and then take the, the, uh, the leachate from that and dilute it into the tank. And you've got a, an organic carbon-rich uh, nutrient that's um, uh, directly extracted from plants. So it has all the minerals that plants are looking for. Some plants are higher in nitrogen and phosphorus, uh, some biomasses, so we can use different types of biomass in this system at different times of the year. At Bioponica, we make blends, so um, that becomes easier. And if you do use it in a dry form and you add water, you're gonna get a lot more nutrients than if you're putting in a wet form. Um, 70, 80% just on the basis of how much moisture content there is. So we'll take, uh, we'll take our biomass blends at a ratio of about one to two, uh, one to three, uh, one pound to three gallons, and then we'll let it soak for a couple weeks and then drain off that leachate. I usually run it through a biofilter. Um, I don't have a biofilter set up right here, but we have a, a, a bag with the, with the biofilter aggregate in there, which serves a purpose uh, and to the most, for the most part unless you get too much carbon in a system like this. Um, uh, but what it does, since you know anaerobic and aerobic microbes live in there, uh, certainly as the water level rises and falls, we get, um, we get biofiltration to take place. So that essentially does the job of the fish that would normally be used in an aquaponic system. It, it uh, consumes the carbon-rich organics and it, and it uh, excretes the inorganics uh, which are carbon uh, neutralized. So carbon uh, is consumed by bacteria just like it is by fish. Fish build up biomass, uh, microbes, bacteria build up biomass, but they also expel CO2. Just like humans, we all have a respiratory um, cycle that, uh, that, that consumes carbon and, um, and excretes, uh, or blows off CO2. So CO2 gas comes out of here you can actually see some bubbling a little bit. Um, but yeah, so CO2 comes out of this as it decomposes the organic carbon and you get a inorganic, more plant ready uh, carbon uh, for, for growing your plants. Now, since this is organic, 
Uh, we don't use any chemicals. We don't use any um, mined or manufactured minerals or, or nitrogen or ammonia or anything like that. Uh, we also benefit to have aggregate with, extra, with, with microorganisms living in there. And because, you know, the, 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 the um, leachate, after even in a solution like this, still has a lot of carbon attached to it, unless you're really burning it off with a separate, you know, uh, extraction uh, biofiltration setup, which we do with our NutriCycler. Uh, in this case, we'll still have organics in the water. Uh, they can cause algae to build up in the water if you have too much sunlight exposing. Um, that, that happens with carbon, uh, which will produce you know, a lot of algae uh, and, and nitrogen and such if you have exposure to the sun. But um, you can balance all of this, and that's what we do. And you can shade it, which we can do with trays, and you can biofilter as we do in the tank and then we do in the side systems but we're you know right in this case we're growing garlic this was these were some spent cloves from the kitchen i stuck them in here a couple weeks ago you see we're getting nice little root formation and these things will do really nicely in here we can grow garlic uh, to full term but since it's a, a longer cycling plant i'll probably take those out and stick them in the ground or Put them in the aggregate, put them in uh, some trays like this, that would be also nice. reason why we'll use, uh, grow longer cycling plants in the aggregate beds is because they, um, you know, they're more vulnerable to, you know, if you have a power loss or if you've, um, or if the water condition changes dramatically. Um, and because they get more nutrients, it's like these aggregate are a nutrient sink and they store microbes, which decompose regu regularly, um, sort of uh, creating this ecological balance that continuously releases uh, inorganic nutrients and keeps the, the these root zones stable with regards to nutrients. Plants also, bigger plants, as they get larger, they anchor into the, uh, into the aggregate, so they're less likely to, to turn over or fall over. Um, uh, but the smaller uh, plants, lettuces and and basils and and herbs and various things, microgreens, those can all be grown in these deep water. Just you know, either in cups like this or in 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 uh, sort of racks that we'll put maybe burlap on top, sprinkle the seeds on directly, and let the roots grow right into the water. Uh, this is a I call this a uh, air uh, layer technique. We have water level rising and falling in this trough, which is really cool. Um, that allows us to get an aeration in these aggregate beds so we're not continuously flooded. And uh, then when the water rises, it, it rehydrates and renourishes the, the aggregate. But there's plenty of aeration cycle in between, which is the most important for plants, whether it's in deep water or in aggregate beds, because you don't want them to get hypersaturated. Let's see what else. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. These systems are great. Uh, this is a uh, these are corrugate uh, uh, pipes that we've we've sort of designed. This is our kind of our patented uh, setup. We call it the bio garden, and it's nice because it's carbon uh, infiltrated HDPE, which is a food grade plastic. It's stable in uh, in this in the heat of the sun. It really, these things never break down. I've seen greenhouses filled with PVC gutters that have been abandoned. And if you look at them, if they've been sitting in a hot greenhouse for some months, they just literally crack and fall apart, decompose. It's, it's really a, dreadful. Uh, these are recyclable. They are um, stable. They can be rebuilt and redesigned. You can make multi-levels, multi-widths. Uh, you can you're gonna do a lot of fun things with this, but always have a simple garden that makes it easy for anyone to, to manage um, once it's set up and operating. Um, almost no labor involved. And again, this this is our leachate. Um, this is an ex extract from kitchen discards. I'm using um, mate teas and and such mostly. Uh, even urine, human urine, we'll put in there.
if we're feeding just ourselves, most people are squeamish about it if they think somebody else's urine's been used. But urine's a great source of fertilizer. It's a great way to recycle, um, um, you know, urine instead of sending it to the waste facility, which is the biggest expense in waste treatment is managing the high nitrogen content of, of uh, urine. Uh, urine's a much better source of, of nutrients than, than uh, manures. Plus, you don't have the pathogens that you get with, with all of the different manures. There's a problem with agriculture these days because sewage sludge is used in organic farming now. I understand that as much as 15% of sewage in the United States is is uh, used for fertilization and they use it in organic farms but um, you know processing animal and human feces which is filled with microbes and parasites and parasite eggs and every other sort of compound chemicals i mean you get some you'll get urine get some uh, you know medicines will be you know maybe present in there in some decomposed form but uh, there's nothing worse than, than trying to uh, remediate a, a, uh, manures just because of the, uh, the load of, of, of stuff in them, for lack of a better word. And they don't have that much nutrients. They are, they're about 10%, 15% of the nutrients you get from the urine. Urine is a pure, direct extract. Just like what you get from fish urine, uh, you're not really saving the fish poop. You're saving the fish urine when you're, when you're you know, doing aquaponics. Um, and same with bacteria. You don't really get to use the, the biofilm to feed your plants. You're using the, the, the liquid fertilizer from the, from the, uh, the, the, um, the urine, uh, essentially, the, that, they, that, they re, that they pass uh, from their gills. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a pure form of nutrients, but it's also hard on the, on the waste treatment facilities. Uh, why not use it uh, for, your, for your gardening? I'll take this, this leachate, um, uh, it's been sitting in here for about three weeks, four weeks, a month, you know, just depends on what you're doing. I just fill the bucket and I've got a little filter mechanism in there so I can just drain off the liquid. And you can dilute this, I just did, I just watered my, my garden plants, the garden flowers, you dilute it, dilute it in water and you've got a really nice um, carbon rich fertilizer that feeds microorganisms and is easy to decompose. If you put solids, if you try to use these solids from this and put it in the soil, it's gonna take a while to decompose. Uh, sure, you're putting carbon into the soil, but you really get more, more carbon from microorganisms and earthworms and, and all of the, the ecology that grows around the nourishment that's in the, in, the, in the ground. The carbon that's in the ground from the liquid uh, feeds microorganisms which, uh, which create the loaminess in the soil. And, and, and they are easier uh, converting the solids, converting the solids this way in a, in a bucket with water anaerobically is a much quicker decomposition process for taking uh, a, a, a solid and turning it into a liquid fertilizer much quicker than putting a solid like the same thing into the soil and letting it decompose or putting the solid in a compost and then letting it decompose. So um, uh, that's it. That's a, this is our very efficient alternative to aquaponics, alternative to hydroponics. It's an organic hydroponic system. Some people argue that it is aquaponics because we have a couple little fish in there, but I beg to differ. Uh, this is a, this is this is bioponics at its best. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate your your um, uh, that you follow us, and I get a lot of great uh, emails and, and comments. So um, I I'm I'm glad to be able to share this. We we're really happy that uh, this technology is is being utilized and and uh, may one day become a, a common thing. So anyway, if you like this, please hit the like button and subscribe button and send us your comments. We'd love to hear from you.